Part of NASCAR safety initiative uh, and changes that we've made in the cars are things that we've learned from looking at crashes. We're able to look at this car, study the damage, take it back to the research and development center. Sometimes we actually will build sleds or test fixtures where we can duplicate the exact um, the exact angle in which the car uh, hit the wall or rolled over so that we can look at different problems in the car and try to fix them. How often do rules usually change for things that you guys, when you guys make suggestions, how often does that usually happen? Hit well, or miss? it happens a lot. Uh, when we first started this program back in 2002, we had dozens and dozens and dozens of rule changes for safety. We actually have crash boxes in the cars, uh, data recorders. They have three accelerometers and they track the X and Y and Z axes of the car and um, the G forces that the driver actually feels. So we have backup on our history within the sport that we can go back electronically and pull what actually the driver and his body felt yeah. in, the, in a crash. We have implemented a couple of um, unique items that try to help keep the cars on the ground and allow the air to get out from underneath it, escaping from underneath it, um, so it doesn't lift the car up when it turns backwards. One of those is, a new, is new for last year, which are hood flaps. These flaps actually open up when a car turns backwards, allowing the air underneath the car to escape out of the top therefore helping it to stay on the ground instead of lifting up off the ground. If you want to come back this way, another thing that we have in place are roof flaps, one on each side of the car. These flaps actually, when the car turns backwards, go up in the air and change the air on the spoiler of the car and try to keep the car, the car back on the ground. One of the major safety initiatives NASCAR implemented was the Hans device. Back in 2001, when Dale Earnhardt had his fatal crash here at Daytona, it was an option. After that, it was made mandatory. It actually slides over the driver's mm -hmm. yeah. neck and sits in place like this. Um, some of the drivers actually put their helmet and Hans on at the same time. Some of them will put the Hans on and then attach the helmet to it with these posts. So when a driver hits the wall and starts to go forward, his belt will stop him at approximately this position. His head is going to want to keep going forward. You want to move your head. And then what will happen with, will be the Hans tethers will tighten up and it will limit the amount of motion that his head can go forward. If he didn't have that limitation, just pull your head forward how far it could go. NASCAR went a step further in protecting the head and neck of drivers by mandating the type and length of support surrounding the neck, which allows the absorption foam to cushion any impact. Denny Hamlin suffered a back injury in a crash last March that provided engineers with valuable data that led to an immediate rule change. What happened was his car nosed into the wall, came up off of the ground, and then slammed down, which caused an injury on his back because of the fact that this particular driver um, wasn't using any energy absorbing foam underneath where he sat in the seat. We have mandated this year that every driver has this energy absorbing foam so that we don't duplicate that injury. It is no surprise that with this kind of scrutiny and technology that NASCAR is trying to stay ahead of the curve in keeping drivers safe. Jessica Taff, Al Jazeera.